Welcome back. This is the second of two videos on my MacBook Pro. The first video was about replacing the old cells with some new cells. If you're interested in watching that procedure, go ahead and watch my previous video. This video is about replacing the thermal compound, a the thermal paste on the CPU and the GPU because I'm running into some minor heating issues. Um, usually just even when I'm using the computer just to browse the internet and to, you know, do messages or look through some photos, the temps are getting up to anywhere between 50 and 70 degrees C, which is, you know, not critical, but getting pretty toasty. And if I try to render a video or do any, you know, video editing, then they just go up to pretty much 80 to 90 degrees, even with the fans on full. And so I figure, you know what, it's probably time to replace the thermal paste. The worst that can happen is it makes no difference. I don't think this is really one of those high risk endeavors. That said, if you're not comfortable doing something like this, absolutely do not do it. Um, uh, one mistake here and you could pretty easily permanently damage your computer. Uh, so, you know, don't say, uh, I didn't tell you so, uh, you know, don't, don't try this at home. I'm what, I'm what you call a professional, all that, uh, BS disclaimer crap. So I got this thermal paste off of the interwebs. Uh, it was the one that had the least or the fewest number of negative reviews. It seemed to be like a good go-to. Anyway, getting to the point here. To remove the heat sink, just take these rubber seals, these rubber boots, and gently peel them away. Next, you have this rubber cover. Remove that. Then there is a screw here and a screw down there, which I believe are both T5 Torx. They are not the same size and they don't even have the same head. Do not mix them up. And then we'll have four for the GPU and four for the CPU, and then the whole heatsink should just pop right off. So let's go ahead and do that. Also take note that I have disconnected the battery for this operation. So all of those fins look dirty from the inside and are slightly blocked. Overall, the flow through those fins isn't, um, it isn't too badly blocked. Also, it's amazing how thin this heat sink is. I guess it would be a heat pipe. Um, and that stuff is pretty crusty. Yeah, that stuff is very dry. Nothing even came off onto my finger, so it was definitely due for replacement. I'm going to first remove the uh, the old heatsink compound from here, just as a little bit better practice for doing it on the board. So I'm going to set this carefully aside for now. Definitely set your computer in a place where it's not going to get damaged. And I'm going to pull out my more junky cutting mat to do this on, just so I don't wreck the one on my table, right, my desk here. And I'm just gonna use some alcohol wipes and some uh, alcohol with uh, Q-tips or cotton swabs, whatever you wanna call them. It 
admittedly I'm, I am being a little um, aggressive on kind of pushing and sliding this stuff off of the heatsink. I'll probably be a little bit more gentle on the CPU and GPU. Right, I'll use one more just to make sure that they are absolutely clean. actually see the writing from the NVIDIA graphics card there. Interesting. I'll also make sure I blow out those holes because, uh, or sorry, those vents, because they definitely need it. All right, so next is the more risky part. And I, the reason why I would prefer to use these alcohol wipes is because they aren't quite as wet as dunking a Q-tip in some alcohol. So it's less likely to spill solvent on the circuit board. Not that I think it would be that damaging, but if you can minimize the amount of liquids on your circuit board, it's probably better. I'm very frustrated right now because for the second time in within the last couple of videos I made, I forgot to press the record button at a crucial moment. So what you missed is me applying the thermal compound to both the GPU and CPU and reinstalling the fasteners with a nice long, you know, conversation about uh, the process and some of the other things about the computer um, or that you know this specific computer that is so frustrating when that happens because one it makes me look bad and two now I can't really show you that because I don't want to take these back off because then you can get air pockets inside of there so yeah I'm frustrated about that my apologies to you the viewer that uh, now you can't really see that Go ahead and give the video a thumbs down because that really sucks. That said, you can't linger on negativity for too long, so let's move on from here. What did I do? I took the thermal compound, and as you saw, there is the larger square and the smaller rectangle. I put a little bit in an X pattern on the CPU. I put a little bit more in a line on the rectangular one. And then I did another, you know, smaller X pattern on the GPU. They did not turn out perfectly, so I did do a little bit of spreading it around, and um, I had to add a little bit more to the uh, to the CPU side. And something that's important to note is that when you're putting the heatsink back in, there are some connections under here that the heatsink has to go underneath. So when you're replacing it, angle it in, and then bring it down. It'll go in just like butter. The next thing I did is I replaced these two fasteners here and it's actually, it's under, you know, these two springs here are quite strong. So just be careful as you use your finger to press it back down and screw the screw back in. Do not tighten these screws much at all. Turn your screwdriver until the screw bottoms out and then just go a little bit further. That's it. I'll show you again. Tighten the screw until the screw bottoms out and then just go a little bit further. Any more than that, and you risk stripping out the threads because these are very, very tiny machine screws. The other thing to note, as I said in the beginning, the flathead machine screw goes on this side. The one that is a little bit taller and more round goes on this side along with the rubber boot. These rubber seals, these, these rubber boots here, they have to hook in underneath the housing for the fan, and otherwise they will sit flat. Now, going past that, the next thing you would do is reconnect the battery 
um, and then put the lid on. However, I'm not putting the lid on the, in this video because as I'm filming, I have not completed the video about the batteries. So if you would like to see how to put the lid back on, you can go over to that video. Or if not, and this is all you came for, the video is over. So until next time, hopefully it's better next time without losing footage. See ya.